This video is for the traveller who finds themselves on a motorbike holiday when in their normal lives they are not motorbike enthusiasts or motorbike owners. The person I'm talking about doesn't have all the gear, doesn't know what to bring and doesn't want to spend too much money on stuff they are likely to throw away once the journey is done. If this sounds like you, then this is a video to watch. When embarking on a motorbike journey, you need to have a helmet, gloves, some safety gear, some rain gear, foot protection of some sort, a way to store your stuff, and a system to attach everything to the bike. Check out this link for a full article on what to bring and where. In this article, I include an itemized list of gear that I carry on motorbike holidays. All right, so let's get started. The helmet. Most rental companies will have helmets of some sort, either for free or for a small rental fee. However, the chances of these helmets being safety certified are low and the chances of them being used and abused to death's end are pretty high. So weigh up the value of your brain and then go from there. The alternative is to buy a helmet. In Vietnam, you can buy good Vietnamese helmets for around $25. These don't have any safety certifications, but are great for what they are. But if you want to get that ECE and DOT safety sticker, and you can buy an LS2 helmet for around 60 bucks. Gloves. Gloves that will provide some abrasion resistance costs in the realms of $50. Gloves like this are a bit thicker and bulky than what I tend to use, which is motocross gloves or disposable gloves. Disposable gloves can be bought for around $6 in Vietnam. Both fingerless gloves and normal gloves are an option in this price range. They are lightweight, simple, and protect your hands from rubs from the motorbike grips. Waterproof gloves Waterproof gloves don't really exist in the throwaway price range and again tend to be fairly bulky for motorbike journeys. It is possible to bring gloves with you, the gloves you use don't have to be motorbike gloves. The lighter and thinner the better in many ways. Obviously it's a compromise of safety. Okay, some safety gear that you may want to wear. Knee pads, elbow pads, chest protection, back protection and shoulder protection. How safe do you want to be is the question you have to ask yourself. All these items are optional. I opt for knee and elbow pads when I drive. They are cheap and they offer huge protection from road rashes, even when your clothes are casual attire such as shorts and a t-shirt. Knee pads and elbow pads range from around $30 to $100, depending on quality. The more expensive items tend to have better protection and better breathability. Back, chest and shoulder protection would come in the form of an armored vest or an ADV jacket. A cheap ADV jacket will cost around $120. So how much safety gear is too much safety gear? The saying goes, wear as much protection as you are comfortable wearing. What tends to happen on journeys is people bring gear that is too hot and it ends up being in their bag strapped to the back of the motorbike. ADV jackets generally are very expensive and very hot. In my opinion, most of the time it is best to look toward the motocross gear, which is better catered to hot conditions and comfortable wear. Rant over about ADV gear being too hot and too expensive, so time to move on. Rain gear. Once again, we look to the motocross gear, as this protection allows you to put any rain clothes that you like over all that safety equipment you chose to wear. So go ahead and bring your rain suit that you purchased 15 years ago for some random hiking holiday. I don't recommend motorcycle specific rain gear. It is expensive, too hot and tends to be a tight fit for some reason. The alternative is to buy a rain poncho in Vietnam for $5. These flap in the wind, get caught in your motorcycle chain and are a great safety hazard. Foot protection of some sort. Protecting your feet is underrated, even by experienced most cyclists. One misplaced rock to your foot can be thousands of dollars of hospital bills. It is the most common injury that I see. Motorcycle foot protection in the form of shoes can be bought for around $100. You would be able to use these for everyday use after your journey as well, be it not that comfortable. Depending on budget, I would probably fork out and get a pair of trials-based motorcycle boots for around $150. But I understand why these might not be considered throwaway items. If you do opt to travel without motorcycle-specific footwear, then be very conscious and aware of how easy it is to bash your feet. So drive carefully, especially when off-roading. Bags and ways to store your stuff. Any backpack or bag is fine, and you shouldn't really need to purchase anything fancy. Obviously, suitcases are not a great idea on a motorbike. Waterproof rain covers can be bought for around $5 but can be thrown over any backpack or bag. From there, bungees and racks are given for free by most motorbike rental companies. The free setup of normal bags and a rain cover works fine, but it isn't hugely convenient. 
bags wobble around, bungee snap, and the setup often needs fiddling with mid-journey. So if a bank balance allows, invest in rock straps. If a bank balance is bottomless, then invest in Krieger gear. Here is my bonus category for this video. Motorbiking isn't cheap. The reality is motorbiking isn't cheap. It is dangerous and it is worth investing in proper gear. Set aside $200 to $300 to get the basics right, even if this means cutting down on beer expenditure on the actual journey. Heat exhaustion from inappropriate gear is a very real issue, especially when motorbiking Vietnam. The biggest mistake I see from motorcyclists around the world coming to Vietnam, apart from when they drive in beach wear, is that they bring gear that is simply too hot and too uncomfortable to wear. If this video has been helpful, please like and subscribe. Feel free to throw in the comments the gear that you recommend. And thanks for watching.